This is Larry Bobka at Second Swing here at Minnetonka Store, and I'm with Josh Miller from the Driving Minnesota Golf Tour, and we're going to do a club fitting. Oh, wow. And that's why I brought it in. I mean, I'm hitting this one right in the face every time. Yeah. You're going to be playing how many rounds this this summer? The goal is 60 plus rounds all over the state of Minnesota. So we figured we we're going to tune up his golf clubs a little bit, take a look, see what we need, let him kind of see what we do here at Second Swing, and get you playing better. I love it. Let's there optimize you go. the clubs. So Josh, I know you're. Uh, we're going to kind of look at the whole bag, but I know the priority right now is kind of seeing, looking at a new set of irons. But we'll kind of go through the whole bag and just take a look and see what kind of numbers you have and, and uh, what we can do to help you get better. Absolutely. So why don't you hit a few shots and then we'll kind of talk about what I see with, with your current club. Uh, you're playing a Pro V1 ball and we'll take it from there. So when you're out there playing, how far, are we, how far are we playing that seven iron again? Seven, normally pull out the seven, we're about 170. Okay, about 170? Yeah. Trajectory, low, medium, high? Pretty medium. Okay. Pretty medium generally. What's, what's, the, what's the bad shot? What's the miss? The miss is a uh, hook left. Okay. A hook or a pull? A little bit of both. A little bit, kind of a pull hook? Yes. Okay. That's good information to have. You see, we've been playing those irons for a while. Yeah, yup, and got them used. It's the best shot I've hit all day. There you go. Yeah, these are pretty cool, actually, these Nike Cobra. They, they, yeah. they, they don't make these anymore. So have you been fit, have you been fit before? I have not been fit. Okay. So no. let's, let's just kind of take a look at the numbers right there. So if we take a look at the numbers here, you know, 83.9 miles an hour, almost 84 mile an hour club head speed, which is, you know, that's fast for a recreational player, although for, for a guy that's going to play 60 sometimes, might get even faster by the end of the summer. Uh -huh. Ball speed's pretty darn good at, at 113, which turns into a smash factor of 134. And what's smash factor? Smash factor is really the efficiency that you're hitting that club. Okay? We'd like to see, with a 7-iron, we'd love to see 135 and above. Okay. Okay. So we're pretty darn close uh, on that shot right there. Launch angle at, at almost 18, 17.9 is pretty darn good. Spin rate at 57. Eh, I wouldn't mind seeing you spin it a little bit more, help you hold greens, especially as you get into the summer in there in Minnesota. Some of those places are going to get, especially as dry as it's yeah, been, they're going to get like this. Yep. You know, we want you holding greens. Height's good. Land angle's pretty good. Uh, Golf swing wise, you know your path. You you deliver the club pretty darn well. So, we're uh, I'm going to look at a couple shots and then I'm going to go grab a few things and see what can make it better for you. Perfect. Are there any through this as we were setting up this process? Were there any manufacturers that you were interested in looking at? You know, nothing in particular. Okay. Uh, just kind of what works. But okay. Yeah. Perfect. I like an open mind. Exactly. All right, I'm going to go grab a couple things. You can hit a few more balls, and I'll be right back. Sounds great. So, Josh, based on what we talked about, you know, you shooting upper 70s, lower 80s, make a pretty good move at it. I brought four different manufacturers in for you to try. Okay. Okay. So the first one's going to be a Ping I-210. So we're just going to have you hit some shots. The important thing is I'll keep an eye on the numbers. Your job is to let me know how they look and feel. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, even though the numbers are good, if you don't like the way it looks or feel, you're going to get out there and play the first hole and grab a five iron and go, gee, I don't like these. We don't want you doing that. So look and feel is very important. For sure. That one felt pretty good. Mm-hmm. 
There you go. Yeah. Good. Let's hit a couple more. So along with that, along with that kind of pull hook that you hit, do you feel like you hit it a little heavy? A little sometime? heavy, a little yeah. Heavy? Every once in a while, okay. for sure. Okay, pretty good swing there. Not bad. Let's hit one more with that, and then I've got a few others to try. So that's interesting because that spin rate is significantly higher than what I've been hitting. Yep. With any other club. Right. And the other thing, too, is I would not be opposed to, say, having my 7-iron be my 160 club, if that's what ends up happening. Well, especially with your miss tending to be a little of a pull draw where mm -hmm. you're going to be a low-spin misser, you know, if you hit it high right, shots that go high right tend to be higher spinning because the face is left open right. that way. You don't do that. So I'd almost rather opt for you to have a set of clubs that are a little bit of higher spinning and also when you're indoors, you're hitting off perfect conditions. When you get out in the real world, there's grass in between the ball and the club. Spin rates go down a little bit. So I like to keep the spin rate a little bit on the higher side here because when you get out there, that's when the low spin things can happen, yeah. especially you're hitting out of rough. And like you said, you're going to go play Chaska pretty soon. Well, they're getting ready for, they're getting ready for the state open. Yeah. They played their last Thursday. The rough is up. Hmm. Very interesting. So we hit that. Yeah, we hit not, that not okay. bad at all. Let's go ahead and let's hit this Titleist iron up. These are beautiful. Yeah, that is that is the Titleist T100s. Yeah. Cut that a little thin. So maybe feeling a little bit heavy and a little bit stiff from what you currently play. Yeah. Yeah. So probably, probably not quite what we're what we're looking for. But one of the things in club fitting, you have to test the parameters. Absolutely. So the reason the, these four came in for were for different shafts, different looks. Uh, this is a Callaway Apex. That's a little better. Hmm. I actually like the way that these feel, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. It's a, um, you know, it's a golf club that kind of sits in between the world of a player's club and a, in a I, hate the, I hate the words game improvement. I like user friendly. Yeah. So it kind of sits in the world between user friendly and a player's club. So it's got a nice look and a nice feel to it. But it also, um, you know, if you hit a bad shot, we get some performance out of it. Right. So that felt pretty good. Yep. Didn't quite so hit it on the center, but. Yep, but that's, that's a little bit better. There you go. That's so that's better. a much yeah. better look. That's a much better looking golf shot. Yeah, there that's you that. go. Beautiful swing there. Very nice. Yeah, I got so that's everything, that's everything we're hoping for out of that golf club. So again, so look at that one right there. So swing speed's basically the same as what with your golf club, but the ball speed goes up about three to four miles an hour. Spin rate stays pretty much where it is. Launch is good. Smash factor goes up, so we get a little bit more carry. Yep. We get a little bit better golf shot. Something that you can definitely play off of and Right now, that would be considered kind of the leader of the best, the best iron that I've brought in so far. So hit one more with that, and then I've got a Mizuno iron for you to try. Yep. There you go. Beautiful. Yeah, that spin right is huge. Yeah. So that and that is a that's a lightweight shaft, but it's in stiff flex. Yeah. It feels so good. yeah. So it's it a Nippon really Modus 105, but it's stiff. So it's a little bit stiffer than what you have. A little bit easier to swing, and you're getting some really good numbers. So let's hit, let's hit this Mizuno. 
Absolutely. 921 Forge. See what you think of that. And then based on, based on you hitting the apex, good, I'm going to bring in a couple other clubs. So it kind of zeroes us more into what we really need. That a little fat. Not bad though for how I hit that. Right. Huh. Not bad. There you go. Okay. Pretty That's good fine. there. So yeah. let's hit let's hit the Callaway again. That one's flying pretty good. I'm also gonna grab a couple other things, but do me a favor, hit me a couple with that and feel like you leave the face a little bit more open through impact. Sounds great, it'll do. Yeah, so along with getting club fit, you get a little bit of help on your golf game. Too. <laughs> That's pretty good. All right, so you hit a couple more with those. I'm gonna go grab a couple other things. I'll be right back. So, based on what you did with that, here is a Shrixon ZX5 in the same <laughs> shaft. Let's see what we do with this. So, similar kind of club head too. You know, it's, it's in the world between a player's club and a user-friendly club. Absolutely. Nothing wrong with a little bit of uh, friendliness towards the user on these. That's, you know, the game's, game's hard enough. We don't need That's to make true. our clubs even harder. That's true. Yeah, that felt pretty good. Yep. A little push left, but. A little bit left, but not too bad. So, you know, a, a lot of fitters will take a look and do measurements. After doing this for 41 years, I, I look at posture. I look at the way you set up. Standard link golf clubs look good for you. That's fine. Might think about flattening them a little bit when we decide on a set of clubs just to help the start line a little bit. But for right now, I think from a standpoint of, of length of golf club, standard is the way to go. For sure. That felt good. Yep. So again, it's, it's, right, in that, it's right in that same vein with, with the Callaway club that we're in, the, we're in the same shaft, we're in the same type of head, we're getting very similar performance. Yep. Okay? So hit me a couple, hit me a couple more with that. Okay? So now I got, a, I got a ping G425 with the same shaft that you've been hitting. So, and we're kind of looking at, we're looking at clubs, sets that we have here. You know, the golf industry has really gone through a tough time with COVID. And there's been trouble with the, with the lead times yeah. and the supply chain. Last year at Second Swing, actually, our fitters and our purchasing guys got together and decided, hey, what do we need for our customers so we can have it in-house? So we actually have this, this quick, quick fit, quick play program that you can walk out the door today with them rather than waiting eight to 12 yeah. weeks for a set of golf clubs. Well, for me and for my purpose, I mean, and, that's, and yeah, that's and you, a necessity. You, yeah, you're going you're gonna to miss 40 rounds of golf exactly. if you have to wait 12 weeks. Okay, so not, not feeling quite as good as the other ones, right? Yeah, not quite. Not quite. Take one more with them. Yeah, I'm just coming behind okay. the ball a little bit. Yeah, and that's fine. That's why every club's not for everybody. So this is here, I guess it's probably what I would consider a souped up model. Okay. Lofts are a little bit stronger, a little bit lighter shaft. Let's see what you do with it. Oh, wow. And that's why I brought it in. <laughs> Because it's got, it's got some feel, it's got some distance, it's, you know, and that's kind of where, you know, you kind of have to decide as, as a player, you know, I don't know your golf game that well, never seen you hit balls till this morning. Right. You know, when you're out there playing, 
Do we like having the distance? Would we prefer to have a club where we back off and be able to swing at 75%, create distance like that? Makes you a better golfer. So. All right, I'll, I'll take a couple of like yeah, some take 75, a couple, Take a couple swings. more swings and then we're gonna hit three against each other. Yeah, that's more like it. So even when I'm not hitting it perfectly online, yep. I mean, that felt yeah. awesome. Yeah. And it was like a half swing. And that's why you see, I mean, even on professional tours where you're seeing guys move to more user-friendly golf clubs. Right. Because it just makes the game a little easier. Hmm. You know, some of us old stick in the muds are still playing blades because we don't know any, we don't need, know any better. Yeah. I mean, I but that's pretty good. These and yeah, so let's do this. So let's hit, let's hit the Callaway. Okay. Versus the Shrixon versus the TaylorMade. And you kind of, so for you, it's kind of, you make the decision. I'll look at the numbers, but for you, it's kind of, hey, what feels good? What right. plays good? And again, it's also about, it's also about looks. So I'll tell you a really quick, great story about looks on a golf club. <laughs> Years ago when I worked for Wilson, the R&D guys were designing a new, a new iron and I was the liaison between the tour and, and the, the R&D department, and Hale Irwin looked at this five iron prototype and he said, well, if I have to play this, I'll quit. He go, I go, why? He goes, because I can't stand on the 72nd hole of a United States Open with a five iron in my hand that looks like this and try to hit it on the green. He goes, it has to look good because it's all about confidence. That's very so, interesting, especially from a pro, you wouldn't expect that to be their main concern, but... It's, oh, it's... I guess it is. It's a huge concern. Huh. It's a huge concern. Should be a huge concern to the average player, too. Yeah, absolutely. That's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, we're hitting a lot of really good golf shots with this one. Yeah, we are. And I mean, that spin rate is, is impressive. Yeah. Spin rate's good. Everything, everything's good right there. I'm losing probably 10 yards of distance, but like that's okay for me. Yeah, but you're also you're also keeping the face in a better position. Yeah. Hit one hard. Hit a hard seven iron. Let one go. Ooh. Yeah, we didn't lose anything there. How about that? It actually went better. Imagine hitting that shot every time. Jeez. That'll make those 50 or 60 rounds a lot of fun this yeah, summer. Yeah, well, exactly. All right, so this is our this is our leader and this is our leader in the clubhouse. Yeah, I think it is. Okay, so we're gonna hit a couple more with the Shrix on, a couple more with the Taylor made, and then we're gonna make we're gonna make our decision here. It feels good. I, I still uh, like that one better. You like the way the Callaway feels a little better? A little bit, but what I'm trying to understand is why this is still going. Probably gives me 10 yards more carry every time. Well, now you're swinging harder. Yeah. You got a shaft that fits your you got a shaft that fits your golf swing better. Mm -hmm. And you got a club head with some newer technology. You know, you got a you got a you had a set of clubs that you've had for quite a while, right? Right. Let's see if I can work this one right to left a little bit because I want that option if need be. So we know the Modus 105 is pretty darn good golf yeah. shaft for you. So here's the last <laughs> one. So Callaway still feel a little bit better than the Srixon? I think so. Okay. All right. So let's just let's just hit a couple with the sim and see see if you can hit some shots with it. Because the only, you know, my only concern with a club that is a little bit more perimeter weighted for you is you might not be able to curve it the way you want to. Okay. So. I mean, I'm hitting this one right in the face every time. Yeah. It's pretty hard to hate that. Yeah, not bad at all. I mean, it feels good coming. It, it feels hot. It feels hotter than the, yeah. the other one. Like Tom Kite used to say, if you don't like that, you don't like golf. <laughs> Feels really good. 
<laughs> I mean, it feels like I, I, I don't even have to swing it, honestly. I wouldn't, I wouldn't bring anything bad, I promise. But that, I mean, and that's why, you know, as is, is you look, as the industry's kind of changed over the years from kind of blades to game improvement, user-friendly type golf clubs, uh -huh. but that's still in an attractive package. I mean, right. it's still a good looking golf club that performs really well and it performs very easy. You know, the cool thing that we have here at Second Swing is we have our 30 day play guarantee. So if you or a customer buys it, and plays it for a couple of weeks and decide, well, you know, they're good, but they're not great. You bring them back, you get full store credit. We know there's another golf club here that works right. just as well. So that, I mean, it's one of the great things about Second Swing is it's, you know, it's almost a 30 day demo program. All right, hit one more with that, then you get hit a few shots with the Callaway. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so a little bit. let's do. It's still gonna go. I mean, that was a pretty bad swing. It's pretty still bad doing swing, that. and it still goes dead straight. Yeah. I.e., that's why user friendly is nice. Exactly. What I will also do is, after you hit a couple of these, I'll bring both of those. I'll bring the the TaylorMade and the. Callaway nine iron in, so you can get some short iron, so you can you can take a look and see what you think. And do both iron sets go down uh, four, five? They're five, five, five through pitch. Okay. Yeah, right now, especially with the distance that players are hitting it, we really there's not a lot of four irons needed now. It's your versatility of a hybrid is way better than having yeah. a four iron. That's interesting because in the, the Nike set, there's a four iron in there. Yeah. And I've increasingly been hitting it more and more and starting to hit it pretty well too. So. The four iron? Yeah. Yeah, but I'll, I'll guarantee you're going to hit your new five iron a lot as further. far yeah, I'm sure. a lot further. I'm sure. Okay, so I'm going to go grab those nine irons. I'll be right back. All right, so here's the Callaway 9-iron. So we're still hitting that pretty good. Okay. You know, another important part of the fitting process for a lot of our customers, too, is price. Yeah. Okay? The TaylorMade set is $700. The Callaway set's $1,100. Yeah. So, you know, that in a lot of people's minds is, you know, is, it, is, is one club worth $400 more? performance wise. Yeah. So I, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's something, it's, it's always something to think about because I know you're not married yet, but I'm married and I know what my wife says when I spend $400 more than something else. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. So this is the Callaway I got my hand here. This is the Callaway 9 okay. hand here. Oh, that felt really good. Yeah. Well, the night, you know, the nice thing about having a forged golf club like this is you, you get the feel, you get the, yeah. you get the performance, you get, the, you get a little bit more workability than you will with the TaylorMade. Yeah. And it's in a beautiful package. It's a great looking iron. Yeah. I mean, so, I, I, I hit that pretty well though. Yeah. 132 carry with a nine iron is not, is not where I want to be there. So I, I, I'm, I'm interested. What do you why. normally, what do you normally? I like to carry my nine normally 145, 150. Okay. Well, you hit that, I think you hit that one a little heavy. A little heavy, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, that's better. See, that's that's forty. That's a good shot. Yeah, that's forty-one years of listening to golf shots. Pretty much get an idea where you yeah. where you hit it on the face and. So give me an idea there. Sixty-seven hundred spin rate is that pretty good for? Yeah, a, compare be? well, and it matches up well with what you're doing with your seven iron. Yeah. So you know, if you're spin spinning, if we're about fifty-five hundred. Yeah, we're definitely in the nine iron range. We're going to be somewhere, we'd like to be somewhere 65 to 7,000. Yeah, the last thing you want is you don't want your, you don't want your short irons not spinning enough. Yeah, so so that's that pretty one, good. That one was probably just, maybe just a hair, a hair heavy yeah. spin rent, rent down a little bit. So hit a couple more with that and then we'll hit the TaylorMade iron.
and there you go. So Pretty that good. that's a little bit better, and we're up to your 143. The other thing is, I would much rather have you spin it a little bit better, yeah, and good. not hit it quite as far I with agree. the short irons. Plus, you've been playing your set for a while. The grooves are worn down. Yeah. You know, you got to remember, you're hitting old grooves versus new grooves that a lot of times people come in and go, well, why, why is the cha spin rate change so, so much? One, because, because the club's different, but you've been playing a set for the last 20 years. There's, there's, no, there's no edges left on those grooves anymore. Yep. You're, basically hitting fly, you're basically hitting flyers from the fairway. Oh, that's really good. I like that. Didn't quite give that everything, but yeah, it's a good result. All right, give me a little, give me a little more speed. There you go. Yeah, that's what we're looking for, right there. So, what do you think? Be between I'm, the I'm two? liking these. I'm liking these a lot. I, okay, I, you I think hit, let's hit the five irons. Let's do that. Let's hit the five irons great. and make a decision on those. Yeah, and you know, and, and on the TaylorMade iron too. It's a, it's a look similar that you're used to. You know, the size of the blade is similar. So there's some, there's definitely, there's definitely some comfort there, uh, which is huge. That's why, like I said earlier, I still play blades. Should I play something a little bit easier to hit? Probably. I just have a hard time looking at something else. All right, so this would be the five iron the tailor made. Let's see what we do with it. Okay, so one of the things that I see a little bit in your golf swing and your setup, I like to see that attack angle with five iron a little shallower. Mm -hmm. So why don't we put the ball a little bit up in our stance and take a couple swings. Okay, that's still still a little bit down. So you have a little bit, and that's probably a little bit where you're, you're your pulls, yeah. those pull hooks come from. That right shoulder really wants to go in there a little bit. So just feel like you kind of leave it, the face open, and you just hit it hard. It's a better feel. Still gonna go a little right, but. A little right. It's better. Yeah. I'm still not so gonna try to yeah, carry hit me, on it. Hit me, one, hit me one more with that. So that, I mean, and again, that's something is, you go through a club fitting, What's really cool is you kind of see your numbers and you kind of see the issues a little bit. Yeah. And as the club gets a little longer, you have a little tendency to kind of throw your right shoulder at that. Hmm. You know, and that's where we a lot of times we'll talk about, you know, where somebody's struggling their swing, we'll, we'll get them, we'll talk to them about, hey, maybe taking a lesson or two along with getting a new set of clubs makes right. a lot of sense. Yeah, absolutely. There you go, a little bit right. So here, let's hit, let's hit a few five irons with the Callaways and see what we do. Yeah, that, I mean, right here, that shot would be really good, except for that. Okay. So, Let's so the attack up. angle is that some coming down on it like that? Yeah, you're coming, you're coming down on it. Okay, so I want to be coming out a little bit shallower. You want to be shallower, Got it. and you know, easiest thing to do sometimes is just put the ball up in your stance. Yeah. I feel like you're gonna just hit it up in the air. Oh wow, that didn't sound good. Yeah. It's it's a different feel. Yeah, absolutely. And again, it's some, you know in a, something in a fitting where. I can point it out to you. It's not necessarily something you want to work on, but it's definitely something you want to work on outside of the fitting is right. feeling trying to get some a little more height. And that's another, it's kind of another reason why three and four irons are gone too. There you go. There you go. But good swing there. Back Very nice. Yep. Much better. Yeah. 
So does, you know, so hit me a couple more with that and then let's make a couple good swings with the tailor made. Yeah. There you go. That's awesome right there. Beautiful. So now we got a five iron going 195 yards. Yeah. We what's the what's the four iron but about that. Yeah. So that's part of the re you know, that's part of the reason now an old set versus a new set, we got a little bit stronger loft, we got a little right. bit better face technology. Now we're a club now we're a club longer. Right. Okay. Well, let's hit let's hit a couple we'll hit a couple five irons. It's not bad actually. Put the tailor made, we'll make a decision, then we'll We'll take a look at some, we'll take a look at a few drivers. Perfect. Well, should we do wedges, you think, before that? We got time. Uh, we can, we can, yeah, we can do wedges. Yeah, let's do wedges. Okay. Yeah, once we decide on, once we decide on a set of clubs, then we can do the wedges. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Hit me, hit me one more. Get shallow one, shallow one out for me. Pretty shallow. Should be. Yeah. Yeah. That's better. Okay. One more. Little you know, fat. and the uh, the other thing, and we can talk about that, but wouldn't hurt you to have a golf ball that spins a little more. Okay. I would play the X versus the V1. Gotcha. Okay. Not going to hurt. You're not going to lose a thing with a little bit spinnier golf ball. Okay. Okay. Right. Especially in the long irons there. Mm -hmm. You get a little bit more height and a little bit more carry with a little bit more spin. Yeah. That's my best there with this go. guy. Beautiful there. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. So that's good. So. Are we thinking the tailor mains? I think so. All right, so you take a break for a second. I'm gonna go grab the rest of that Sounds set. That's great. And then we can do the wedges because this set, this set actually comes with a gap wedge. Oh, awesome. So we'll hit the gap wedge and then we'll kind of decide what we need past that. Great. Yeah, these are beautiful. Yeah. I like so, them a lot. So that's, that's gonna be your gap wedge. Okay, so the, the question becomes, you know, kind of in your set makeup and in your wedge play, do you like having a 60? So right now I've got a 60, 56, 52. I okay. use a 60 and 56 a lot. Okay. What, I, what we would probably look at, because this is going to be 50 degree, mm -hmm. probably go a little bit further. I either usually like to go 54, 60, so you'd be 50, 54, 60, or we might go 50 and take that 54 or 56 and bend it to 55. Okay. Because I want to get you good gaps between that distance and changing at a changing at a degree isn't going to hurt the short yeah. game, but it definitely helps when you're hitting fairway shots in. So I'm, I'm looking for. I'd love to find about 15 yards between your wedges. A lot of people are too tight. You know that 52, 56, 60 sometimes gets a little bit a little bit tight. That all of a sudden you're in between going, do I hit this? Do I hit that? You know, you want to have a good 15-yard gap between sure. your wedges. For sure. So let's just let's just hit this like you're going to hit this out on the golf course. You know, let's hit let's hit a couple good solid. Very nice. A lot of spin on that. Because pitching wedge, pitching wedge, you're looking well. Again, you probably got some old wedges. Exactly. So compared to what I've got, and then yeah. so that's why we get a little yeah. less. So carry pitching too. wedge, we like to see go about 120. Yep. Okay. Well, I'd say right now about 120, 130, just because there's no spin on it. Well, we have your but, we have yeah. your we have your pitching wedge here. So let's do this. Let's hit the pitching wedge first, because we have the pitching wedge and the gap wedge, and then we'll decide where we're gonna go. And that's the other great advantage about getting getting this set with our quick play is you get to hit get to hit all the numbers. Yep. All right. So go ahead. So put two or three good put two or three good swings on it. That's pretty good. There you go. There's your one. There's your one thirty. That's a lot of a lot of heat on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
that's there it. There we go. Solid there. Yeah. So that's going to be our 130 core. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to hit this gap wedge, and we'd like to see this. We'd like this to be our 115-ish club. Yeah. That should do it. Yep. You know, 117. Perfect. That's what. That's exactly what we want to see. Okay. So I brought you in a Vokey 54. And I brought you in the full sew wedge, and I will explain to you why I like the full sew wedge because you're going to use that mostly. Yeah. You can use that mostly as a fairway club. You're also going to use that club for long bunker shots. You want some bounce on there. Yeah. There's no reason to have any grind, especially as you get through the year. Now this year is kind of strange here in Minnesota. It's been a little bit dry, but most of the time it's a little bit wet. You get some tight lies. You want bounce. Yeah. And if it doesn't have enough bounce, you're going to stick it in the ground. And what happens is, people don't, don't realize what happens is, is, is you stick it in the ground. You want to make your strike in your wedge somewhere between the third and the fourth groove. If you stick it in the ground, now you hit it the fifth or sixth groove, and it up comes and up, up yep. high with no spin, and it doesn't carry the yardage. Hmm. Bounce helps maintain that strike position. Interesting. So people, a lot of people don't understand that. All right. And the best wedge players that I've ever worked with and spent time with, bounce is your friend. So what's my target distance on this? You think about 100? 100, 100 yards. Yep. Yeah, because we're 130, we're 115. We want to see a nice, smooth 100. That should do it. Yeah. 97. A little tug too. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. 99. So that's where now you know when you put a good smooth swing on, we got 130, we got 115, we got 100. Okay. Why don't you grab your 60? I'd like to see what you do with your 60. But now we've got. We got five through a 54. Perfect. Now we're going to talk about, this is, this is the one, this is the versatile club. This is the club that you hit fuller shots with from the fairway, but it's also your bunker club. It's your chipping club. It's the club that, it's the club that you hit a lot of shots with. And we're going to talk a little bit about, we need to talk a little bit about your short game. All right. So yeah, when you hit that, you. when you're out there, I mean, is that an 80, 85 yard club exactly. right there? Exactly. Okay. Nah, that's not good. Okay. So how, how, how is your short game? Uh, it's pretty good. It, it's gotten a lot better the last few months. Okay. Um, I'd say, you know, around the greens and I, I, the, cl the closer I can get, like, the better. And the better just, off you are? Yeah. Okay. Um, how's that club out of rough for you? Is uh, it okay? Yeah, no. it's not. I mean, it hasn't given me any problems. I've never okay. had a bad round of golf instead okay. of just because of my Yeah, wedges. I mean, it doesn't have a lot of bounce, but it's got a fairly wide sole. So when you open it up, you actually create more bounce yeah. with it, which makes it nice. But I think there's something out there that's a little bit oh, better. Oh, sure. Plus the grooves on that one. Yeah, the grooves gone. are, you know, in, in understanding grooves. So in 2010, when the USGA made the groove ruling, they made manufacturers make the grooves smaller and shallower. So the only way that you maintain the spin now is by the sharpness of the edge. Yeah. Well, once that wears down, you're gone. That's why tour players change their Every Especially tournament. their sixties, like every month. Oh, I okay. thought it was even more than that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, some guys, some guys are even more than that, but most of them, most of them change it every month. You know, a good uh, a good player or an active player really needs to change their highest lofted wedge once a year. Yeah. Because you're not get, you don't maintain the spin, and that then sounds. you don't understand it. The other discussion that I have, and I I could go on for forty minutes about this. Somebody wants to be a better wedge player. Well, what golf ball do you play? 
Well, sometimes I play a Pro V1, sometimes I play a Callaway, sometimes I play a TaylorMade, sometimes I play a Bridgestone. How can you control the spin and the trajectory and the feel of your shots if you change your golf ball? Yeah. Okay. If you want to be a great wedge player, you got to play the same ball every time because you know how it comes off your wedges. Okay. When you get inside 100 yards, it's about the cover of the golf ball. When you're outside 100 yards, it's about the core. So it's not that huh. important. But when you get inside 100 yards, when you're talking about wedge play, putting, it's all about... It makes that, a lot of sense. It's all about that white thing or yellow thing, whatever you play. Yeah. So I tell people, I don't care if, I, I don't care if it's a $20 a dozen or $20 for 15 ball. Play the same ball because that's the only way you're going to be consistent. Yeah. Huh. So that's my... That's my, uh, that's my speech on golf balls. I've got a Vokey 60K. So if you look, sole width is pretty much the same. Yeah. Okay. The biggest difference is, is you take a look at that, there's not a lot of bounce or camber, which camber is roll. Okay. This has got a lot of roll. This has got a lot of camber this way. A little bit more versatile, especially in all bunker conditions. So when you get in there and get in some soft sand, you can roll that thing open and it's going to splash. That, that one's designed, yeah, that's right, right off of great. Tom Kite's old 62 degree wedge, which hmm. one of the best wedge players I've ever seen. So if, he, if, if that stole works for him, it's going to work for a whole bunch of people. A little more stability through the fairway yeah, too. That, so that, that felt really good. Yeah. So when you when you hit shots with that, it's going to keep the face going square. Yeah. You know, again, and it it's all about that strike on the third or fourth groove. There you go. Beautiful, right there. That felt really good. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So now the spin goes up, the strike gets better, and. Now you're using the bounce the way it's designed, okay? <laughs> if you've got a shot where you don't need as much bounce or you feel like you need to make contact, then you put it back, then you put it back in your stance. So it, it, it basically becomes, if I'm at 90 degrees, I'm using the shaft and the bounce and the loft the way it's designed, Right. okay? If I do this, so if I go forward, now I've taken loft off, I've taken bounce off. So there's a possibility I'm, I'm putting that leading edge into the ground a little bit. Now there's some shots you want to do that for, but not too much. And then if we're talking about a flop shot, you know, now that I've, now my hands are back, I've added bounce and I've added loft. Yeah. Hmm. So, I mean, that's a simple way to think about it, you know? 90 is, 90 is where the club's designed. Less loft, less bounce. More loft, more bounce. Got to keep it simple. Um, we got a little time. You want to hit a couple drivers? Let's do a couple drivers. And then yeah. I also want to make sure we get putting potentially. Okay. Um, if we have time for that. Yeah. Well, let's just hit a couple drivers Perfect. and then we can, we can putt real quick. Okay, so this is one of my, Ooh, wow. okay. along, with, uh, along with the Ping and the new Titleist driver, this is one of my favorite new drivers is the Callaway Max. It's not bad. No, nope, pretty good. Hit me one more with that. I'm going to do a little setting change. That's going to go. Yeah. There you go. 272 right down the middle of the fairway. We could live with that, huh? All right. So try that. Okay. So maybe a little low on the loft, but let's, let's make a... Let's put a couple good swings on it and see what we get. Yeah. 
There we go, 271, perfect. So that, your driver's 10 and a half. Mm -hmm. That one's set at eight. Okay. I know that a lot of the pros are going to lower and lower. Well, you, it's because of your spin rate and your launch angle. If you launch it, if you launch it where you are there with the attack angle slightly positive like we like to see, now you get max carry and max rollout. Yeah. Your driver is a little spinny. You hit it okay. I think it also helps. It keeps you doing that because there's a little bit too much loft. If you hit it up in the air, it's like it's going to fly too high and it's going to spin too much. Mm -hmm. You know, especially hey, you're going to be playing golf in Minnesota. It blows in Minnesota. You want yeah. a driver that you can hit in all conditions. You don't want to have to stand there into the wind and worry about it, your driver spinning too much. Oh, yeah. That felt good. Yeah, 283 right down the middle. Yeah. We could live with that. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's perfect. A little low on the face, but that should still go. Yeah. But still, we get it. We get a good. We still get a good shot. Spin rate stays low. I mean, that's the only problem with your driver is when you hit it low in the face, it spins up to thirty-eight or thirty-nine hundred. Mm -hmm. That stays down. Okay. That's a whole lot better. A little bit. Yeah, a little block to the right. So hit me. Hit me a couple more with yours. Um, you know. Can help you with yours. There you go. So that's yours cranked down to nine degrees. Okay. So let's see what we do with that. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So that's gonna be a whole lot better right there. Yeah, that's pretty so good. So we know there's we know there's good technology out there, but you're that's strictly too much, you had too much loft on your driver. Yeah. Spin rates down, launch conditions are so much better. Now you hit a 283. Mm hmm It's pretty good. One more with this. Not a great swing. Yeah, a little block, I mean, a That's little fine. tendency to block it. Maybe getting a little tired too. You've hit a yeah, lot. Yeah, hit, hit, hit a lot while. of golf. Hit a lot of golf shots. Yeah, I mean, you go sometimes that's what, this afternoon too. So you know what, we'll Josh? What people don't realize sometimes how many golf, sh how many swings they're going to take in a fitting. Yep. You know, it. It. We try. We try the best we can to minimize the number of shots, but you're going to hit a lot of golf shots. I mean, you're going to hit way more golf shots than you think, and it's not like, well, I play round of golf or I play thirty. Six. Yeah. But you hit your shot, and then you walk. You get in the cart, walk, yep. go to it, and then you hit it. I mean, it's a little bit of rapid fire here, so you got to you got to be prepared in a fitting to hit some golf balls. So let's hit one more, and then we can we can spend a couple minutes on putting. Yeah. Okay. So so you know, so I just made your driver better by changing the setting. Significant. I mean, that's one of the things we like to do here when, you know, you're predominantly coming in for an iron fitting, but hey, can I hit a couple of drivers? Quick setting change, you walk out the door, you know that down the road, if that doesn't start working, if that starts misbehaving, there's a Callaway driver that, that is every bit as good or maybe even a little better. But no need to change right now. Perfect. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, you know, and that. here and here at Second Swing, nobody's on commission. So we're here we're here for you. We're here about helping you and you being happy that you know that hey, when I wake when I wake a change with that, you know where to come. All right? Appreciate it. Let's go let's grab do it. Let's go let's go hit a couple putts. So we're gonna have you hit a couple putts. I'm gonna see how it comes off your putter and we'll take it from there. Great. There we go. There's a valid putt. So you made it. Here's the problem though. It's launching too high. We like to see it launch between one and two degrees. Ball gets out of its hole on the grass, turns over, 
and rotates. Yours is launching high, and it's actually, if I put your golf ball in motion, your golf ball is actually going backwards. Interesting. Yeah. So that hurts in speed control, that helps yeah. in line, or hurts in line. Faster greens, you might get away with it, but the problem is your ball's going this way, then it has to hit the ground, kind of bites, and then turns over. Leave a lot of putts short. A uh, little bit. A little yeah. bit. All Maybe right. I missed normally because of that. Let me go. Let me go make an adjustment. So the putter had the putter had four degrees of loft on it. Okay. So for the way you're delivering the putter, way too much loft. So now it's down to two. Let's see what you do. Yeah, oh, that feels really good. Feels a lot more solid, doesn't really it? Really good. So we're still launching it a little high, a little high, so we can still take a little bit more loft off it. Okay, and, but, and, and is that something that I'm doing? Or should I be? Well, that's uh, we can we can talk about that for okay. a second. But now we've got at least some overspin, and we have no side spin. So you're delivering the putter really squarely, mm -hmm. but it just had too much loft on it. So remember we talked about the wedge angle, mm -hmm. that if the putter is, that if the wedge is here, it's the correct lot, yep. your hands are back. Like so that, you're, right? at, you're, adding loft, you're adding loft to the putter. Mm -hmm. So if I go here at 90 degrees, now you go ahead and roll me one. Look at that. Now That's we've got better. 33 RPMs of overspin. Yep. And we're launching it correctly. So you had too much loft on the putter and a bad hand position. But was your hand position because the putter was wrong and that just looked better for you that way? That's like, you know, it's kind of the chicken and egg right, discussion. Right, right. Is my stroke bad because of the putter or is my putter bad because of my stroke? Your stroke's not bad. You're just set. You're just setting yourself up in the wrong place with too much, with too much loft. Mm -hmm. So if I was here, okay, I need about one and a half to two degrees loft if I'm going to strike it at 90 degrees. That's why PGA Tour players are a little bit positive, so they have three or four degrees of loft on their putters because they want their hands leading the putter. Okay, if you're back here, you're adding loft. You're adding side spin and you're creating a bottom strike. Yeah. Like you said, the minute you hit it first, all of a sudden you think, oh my gosh, it feels, because you actually hit one in the center of the face. Right. Hands forward, roll that ball. Okay, is that about what we want to do for hands? Yep, that looks good. It. Look at that. Boom. So 77 RPMs of overspin. Mm -hmm. So it's almost, that's where Quintex says, hey, maybe even a little bit too much. Yeah, well, I, I, I mean, it feels like I'm overdoing it a little bit. You're doing, overdoing it a little bit. Still, but still, to think but, about. But watch this. That's a steamroller going to the hole. And oh, by the way, now the axis is coming out and the ball's turning like this. Yeah. Where yours was turning. Well, it's actually kind of going like going this. Back. Interesting stuff. Yeah. Huh. So what I would do now for a while, since we made a change to your setup and made a change to your putter, I wouldn't change the putter yet. I'd go play a few rounds of golf. When you guys swing by through here, might not be a bad thing to do a little checkup. For sure. See what's going on and see how you're rolling. But because that's a pretty big change. It's a it's a loft change and it's a setup change. So I'd rather have you do it with your putter first. Okay? Beautiful. There you go. Thanks so much for your help, Larry. You're very welcome. Appreciate it.